What happened to Rasheem Carter? The family calls it a modern day lynching, but cops say it seems like animals did it. Here's what we know about Rasheem's death. Rasheem Carter, a 25-year-old Black man from Fayette, Mississippi. He was found dead last year. His alleged death was a modern-day lynching. They've accused local police of failing to investigate the crime and said Carter warned he was being pursued by white men in trucks before he vanished. However, the police insisted there was no evidence to suggest that there was foul play after his remains was found and they have speculated that animals may have ripped Carter's body up. So let's go back here. Carter, a 25 year old black man He's from Fayette, Mississippi. However, he was doing work in another part of Mississippi um, in which he was staying in a hotel to complete whatever work he was getting done and had a misunderstanding or some type of uh, disagreement with um, one of the, I don't know if it was an owner of the site, but it was um, someone that was related to his job that he was doing. Um, and he made a call to his mother stating that um, truckloads of white men were trying to kill him. And he also texted his mother stating that if something happened to him, um, that they are more than likely the person or people that did this to him. Um, so not only did he call his mom, he also text her this information. So here's what we know about Carter's death. Carter's mother, Tiffany Carter, stated in a press conference that her son called her on October 1st, 2022. And this was the day before he went missing. She stated, my son told me it was three truckloads, three truckloads, guys of white guys trying to kill him. She said, explaining that she told her son to go to the local Taylorsville, Mississippi police station for help. So after he reached out to his mother, who was in another part of Mississippi, she instructed him to reach out to the police to make a statement because isn't that normal reaction if we feel like, we are, you know, our life or something is in jeopardy, we reach out to the police because that is what the police do. However, the mother is stating that the police did not protect her son. She stated that he asked for help. However, they did not give him any help. When he arrived at the police station, he gave the complaint they felt like he was not in any danger. He asked if they could give him a ride back to his hotel. They did not give him a ride back to his hotel. And guess what, guys? That was his last place that he was seen. And he was vanished. The next thing, they found his body parts. However, the Taylorsville police chief stated the reason that they did not assign a police officer to re return Rasheen home was because of staffing shortages. It is stated that Rasheem told the officer that night he and his roommates had a verbal disagreement and he left and he felt threatened. Um, this is what he told the police department. The police also stated that he never seemed to be threatened and he did not seem as if he was in any distress or immediate um, danger. Um, they stated that they did offer him a phone call. However, he said that he had a phone, um, that he just needed a phone charger to be able to charge his phone. 
Tiffany Carter, which is Rasheem's mom, she said that her son texted her to say he and the business owner whose identity she did not reveal were not seen eye to eye. He also stated if anything happened to him, the owner would be responsible. He said, I'm too smart, mama. He got these guys wanting to kill me. And this is what he texted. Tiffany described her son as a great man. He's an entrepreneur who loved to cook and always wanted to leave a legacy. Um, he had a seven-year-old daughter. On October 2nd, Rasheen's family reported him missing to the Mississippi Laurel Police Department. And they said that the last time that they had saw him was at a Super 8 hotel. And I'm going to go back and say why um, the family is saying that that is the last place that they saw him. Um, there's information that states that when the family came into town, they went to local businesses and that he can be seen on camera. So that is the last place he was seen on camera. It turns out that Rasheen was a welder. And as I stated earlier, he was in town as a contractor. Um, so he definitely was self-employed. And according to the missing person report, now keep in mind, the police stated that he did not tell them that he was in immediate danger. But according to their report, that he warned and stated that there were three truckloads of white men and that they were trying to kill him. So that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to play the video up next to kind of give you guys some more insight and let you see and hear from his mom, and then we'll come back for commentary. Brutal injuries at the time Rasheem Carter's body was found, the Sheriff's Department said no foul play was suspected. The Carter family is now asking for a federal probe into the investigation. Carter's mother says Rasheem told her he was being targeted by white men in the community. Then, just days later, he went missing. According to the family's attorney, Ben Crump, Carter, Carter's head was removed and his spinal cord was found in a different area. Some of his body parts are reportedly still missing. The Mississippi State Medical Examiner's report states that the conditions of the remains make it difficult to pinpoint the time of death. The report lists both the cause and manner of death as undetermined. This was a nefarious act. This was an evil act. Somebody murdered Racine Carter. And we cannot let them get away with this. On um, October the 1st, my son texts me. This was after uh, him and I had gotten off the phone. He said, me and the owner of this company, not seeing eye to eye, mama. His name, I, which I can't say at this time, but if anything happened to me, he's responsible for it. I'm too smart, mama. He got these guys wanting to kill me. And that's what he sent to me. And then he went missing. Nemo, what sense does it make for the police to say there is no evidence of foul play? He didn't dismember himself. Yeah, that's a very poor statement by law enforcement down there in, in Mississippi because it's been four months. They really haven't been able to figure out what happened here. And at best, you know, you have wild animals and the body parts are scattered over two acres. But this is the type of case, you know, I'm team Ben Crump. You got to get the feds involved here. You got to figure out what happened because if mom is right and he was really being chased by three truckloads of white men and you have a potential motive here, you may have a hate crime, you have a murder, and if you can't figure it out, law enforcement, you got to get feds involved so they can. Yeah, I'm getting really Ahmaud Arbery vibes here, and I'm not liking it. Terry, law enforcement said they are waiting for the results of search warrants to rule out foul play. What do you think they're searching for at this point? 
well, you know, the statement that he made to his mother, and that's in a text, so they can take a look at that, specifically name the individual he thought was behind this truckload of white men, he said, in the community chasing him. So that's where they need to start. They need to investigate and interview that particular individual. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, they need to track his phone, they need to track his car, they need to do GPS, and they need to check any of the individuals he may have communicated with, because that's going to tell us what happened to the victim on this day, because we know that he couldn't have decapitated himself. So are you born in Mississippi? We should send you there to start the investigation. I think we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. Well, another family begging for. So we are back for our commentary. So the same question, um, what happened to Rasheem Carter? I mean, we can look at the history of police stations. We know that that location in Mississippi is very racist. And even if it wasn't racist, we know that race plays a huge factor when it comes to African-American people. Um, so in this case, we have Rasheem who has reported to his mother via phone and via text that he felt like he was being pursued and that there were three truckloads of white men and that they were trying to kill him. Keep in mind um, that it's not stated anywhere online, but if you think about it, um, his mom stated that he was going there to do work. She stated he was an entrepreneur. So you would make the distinction that he did not work for the company, but he was definitely had to be some type of contractor. Um, in some part of the information, it states that they were in a hotel together, which also leads me to believe that there were other contractors and maybe they got a hotel room together to kind of save on, um, you know, they all can just, you know, stay in one place. Now, what happened to the point that this person had, you know, got all of these people against him and wanted to kill him is a situation that I don't know. But I do know that if I felt like somebody was trying to do something to me and they showed me by their actions, and this is exactly what happened. He said it was three truckloads. Um, they found his body in the woods. So we don't know if he start running. We have no idea. Um, we do know that the police station was the last place that he was seen alive. What if the police was working with these people? Why did they not investigate this case? The mother actually went back to a local business. She was able to get footage of him outside. Um, the mother stated that the business owner, after she asked, she said she asked the business owner, have the police come here and ask you for any information? And she said, no. Um, so it leads me to believe maybe the police are more involved than what they're stating. We do know that some police departments have a long standing um, issue with racism. If we, if I were just to bring up a few, we know Minneapolis police. If you guys were to look up Minneapolis police, they have a long standing history of racism. If you look at the Los Angeles police, um, and this stuff you can all look up, Los, Van Los Angeles police, um, there were a lot of racist texts that was revealed. So a lot of, a lot of stuff going on with the LA police. There's a lot of information out there. Um, with regards to um, police and racism. And we know that that state, uh, Mississippi, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty racist place. So I wanted to, you know, talk about this story because we need to get this out there. We need to get this out there. This case needs to be solved. And it definitely reminds me of that Ahmaud Arbery situation. This black man, 25 years old, was hunted down and was pretty much executed and nothing is being done about this. So we need to get this word out. We need to share this video and you need to share it on your Facebook or wherever you can share it at. Um, but 
let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if this, you know, if these type of cases are things you would like to see in the future. And let's get the word out there. And um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.